we are now going to look at the problem of calculating the distance on the Earth between any two points at the same latitude, but not necessarily at the equator. We have come across calculation of Earth distances before. The great circle distance between any two points on the Earth can be calculated using a general equation involving spherical trigonometry, but this is beyond the scope of the syllabus. Consequently, problems involving the calculation of great circle distances are limited to those where the two points lie on special great circles. These are when the points are both on the same meridian, or when they are both on the equator. Suppose we have a chart like this with a root on it. We measure the track distance with a pair of dividers. If there is no graduated scale line at the bottom of the chart, we can measure against the number of minutes of change of latitude. Can we do the same thing against the change of longitude? The answer is no, of course. One minute of change of longitude is not one nautical mile, except at the equator. Let's see why. We'll go back to some basic concepts. All meridians, along with their associated anti-meridians, are great circles. However, only one parallel of latitude is, which is the equator. All other parallels of latitude are small circles. One nautical mile equals one minute on any great circle, for instance, on a meridian or at the equator. Therefore, at any latitude, one minute of change of latitude always equals one nautical mile. However, this is true only for change of latitude or at the equator for a change in longitude. So now let's define departure and work out how to calculate it. Departure is defined as the distance between two meridians along a specified parallel of latitude. So departure is always a rum line, the parallel of latitude. It's important to understand this there will also be a great circle distance between two points, which will be shorter, but this is not departure. It's also possible to calculate either the rum line or the great circle distance between two points not at the same latitude, but these are not departure either. It has to be along the parallel of latitude to meet the definition. It's usually measured in nautical miles but it could be in kilometres. Departure will always be greatest at the equator, where it is part of the great circle. It reduces as the meridians converge and becomes zero at the pole, where all meridians meet. At the equator, the change of longitude in minutes is multiplied by one. At the pole, the change of longitude in minutes is multiplied by zero. Departure is therefore a function of cosine, which has a value of one at zero degrees and zero at 90 degrees. The equation is therefore that departure equals the change of longitude in minutes multiplied by the cosine of the latitude. In the same way that we examined the sine curve when looking at convergency, let's look at some of the more common values of cosines of angles, because these frequently come up in questions on general navigation. Here is a cosine curve. Let's look at the angles between 0 and 90 degrees. The cosine of 0 degrees is 1. The cosine of 30 degrees is 0.866. The cosine of 45 degrees 
is 0 0.7071. The cosine of 60 degrees is a half or 0 0.5. The cosine of 75 degrees is about a quarter or more accurately 0.259. And the cosine of 90 is 0. Cosine reduces from 1 to 0 as the angle increases between 0 and 90 degrees. The relationship between departure and change of longitude is therefore defined by the cosine of the latitude. This gives us the basic departure formula. Departure equals the change of longitude in minutes multiplied by the cosine of the latitude. Consider two meridians on the Earth, joined by a parallel of latitude. We can extract the basic elements of this situation in the sketch. In this example, the change of longitude is 20 degrees. Multiply by 60 to convert it into minutes, then multiply by the cosine of 52 degrees, this gives a departure of 738.8 nautical miles. Test questions are unlikely to be as simple as that. They usually involve conversion of units from kilometers to nautical miles, or some rearrangement of the equation. Take this example. An aircraft at position 60 north and 5 degrees and 22 minutes west flies 165 kilometers due east. What's the new position? Firstly, convert 165 kilometers to nautical miles. To do this, divide 165 kilometers by 1.852. The answer is 89 nautical miles. Now we need to substitute into the departure formula. So, departure equals the change of longitude in minutes multiplied by the cosine of the latitude. Which of these do you know? The departure is 89 nautical miles. Substitute it into the equation. The latitude is 60 north. Its cosine is a half. Rearrange the equation. This gives 178 minutes of change of longitude. This is 2 degrees and 58 minutes from an initial longitude of 5 degrees and 22 minutes west. So, since we are going eastwards, it is 5 degrees 22 minutes west minus 2 degrees 58 minutes which equals a new longitude of 002 degrees, 24 minutes west. The new position is 60 north and 2 degrees and 24 minutes west. Here is another example of a different substitution. In this one you are given the departure and have to find the latitude instead. In which latitude is a difference of 44 degrees and 11 minutes equivalent to a departure of 2,000 nautical miles? As usual, start with the formula. Departure equals the change of longitude in minutes multiplied by the cosine of the latitude. Which of these do you know? You know the departure and the change in longitude. Write them in. We now need to convert 44 degrees and 11 minutes into minutes. It comes to 2,651 minutes. Now rearrange the equation to make the cosine of the latitude the subject. Use the arc cosine function on your calculator to solve for the cosine, which gives us a latitude of 41 degrees. So the latitude is 41 degrees. Remember, it could be north or south. Convergency and departure are symmetrical either side of the equator.
you need to be able to solve questions where you are given departure at one latitude and have to solve it for another. Consider this question. An aircraft leaves position G at latitude 40 south and flies the following rum line tracks and distances. G to H, track 180 true, distance 240 nautical miles. H to J, track 270 true, distance 240 nautical miles. J to K, track 000 true, distance 240 nautical miles. What is the rum line bearing and distance from K to G? There are two ways you can solve these types of questions. One is by a double substitution into the basic departure formula. It works, but it's slower. The other is by use of the following formula. Departure at latitude A divided by departure at latitude B equals cosine A over cosine b. The new formula is quicker. Let's do the question both ways. Firstly by using a double substitution into the basic departure formula and then secondly by using the new method. You should then see the advantage of the new formula.